When the phone rings at midnight in most doctor's offices, it means somebody's decided to have a baby in the next five minutes. But where I work, it usually means a good first-class case of fraud, manslaughter, or murder. Because my boss is... Dr. Paul Standish, medical examiner. Introducing Dr. Paul Standish, George Harmon Cox's famous young medical examiner who mixes mystery, murder, and medicine. Tonight's story, directed by Albert Ward, features Gary Merrill as Dr. Standish and Audrey Christie as his nurse, Mary Benson. Back in nursing school, I dreamed that someday I'd work for a doctor who's young, good-looking, shy, uh, yes, unmarried, (laughs) and such a miracle man of a doctor that I could write patient recovered across every file card. And do you know what? After graduation, I landed a boss who matched up all the way, except in one respect. Dr. Paul Standish is the county medical examiner, so across the reports I fill out, more often than not, I write the word murder. By 10.30 last night, I'd written murder a hundred times at least. No, not a massacre. Murder is the word I doodle these days. And I'd had three hours to doodle it, waiting in the office for him to show up. And by the time he opened the door, I meant every doodle. What are you doing here this time of night, Benson? Say hello. 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 I'm waiting to remind you that you have a private practice that also needs attention. I want to send out Bill. Oh, no, not tonight. Not after a day like this. I'm dead. (laughs) You want to know about that. Will you sign the death certificate or shall I? Mark me dead on arrival and get your hat. <laughs> Mike's downstairs with the car, and the county owes you a free ride home. Oh, really? Now, you've got to send out Bill. Some other time, Benson. Come mm-hmm. on, the hat. People expect a doctor to send bills even if they don't pay them. If you're ever going to stop this medical examiner foolishness and be the doctor you could be, you've got to... Oh. See what you get for being unkind about my job? If this is Lieutenant Ballard with a body, I'll scream. Hello? Yes, Dr. Standish speaking. Oh, yes, Seti, I remember you. Tonsils. Are you sure? All right, you stay there with him and I'll be right over. Mansfield Arms, right? <laughs> I apologize. For what? To Ballard. You needn't. That was one of my private patients who's unearthed the body. You mean everybody's doing it now? <laughs> The Mansfield Arms was an architect's idea of how to combine a cathedral with gracious living, stained glass windows, dark paneling, and one elevator. The doc and I had to climb four flights of stairs because Eddie, the night bellhop who'd called, had taken the elevator up and left it up to keep his death watch. Yes, sir, doc. I found Mr. Arnold lying here by the fireplace when I walked in with a bottle of scotch he'd ordered. Mr. Arnold was entertaining tonight, was he, Eddie? Yes, sir. Just after he called me to send out for the scotch, this girl came in and asked for his apartment. I brought her up. Did you bring her down? No, miss. No, I didn't. He had a couple of men visitors early. They didn't come together. But I brought them both down before this girl came. Is there a back way? No. No, I guess she killed him all right and then came down the stairs while I was coming up in the elevator. What makes you think she killed him? Well, look at that big bump on the back of his head where he fell in the hearth. You know who she was, Eddie? No. No, first time I ever saw her here. Though, by golly, I I swear I've seen her someplace else before. Blonde, brunette, redhead, um, or all three? Well, blonde, I guess. She wasn't so pretty, but then again, she was interesting, I guess you'd say. Young, maybe 23 or 24, and big eyes, strange-like. Hey, Doc, you can't use that phone. I ain't down on the switchboard. Well, then go on back down and get on it. But first, step outside and tell Mike, my driver, to put a call through in the car phone for Lieutenant Ballard at Homicide. What? Now, that'll be quicker. Oh, if you can, give a description of the girl. Well, what's the matter? You got a phone in your car? Say, okay, I'll tell him. Well, maybe we'd better do a little report on this while waiting for Ballard. Right. You start off with what we know while I take a closer look. All right. Eddie said the first name was Harry, didn't he? Mm Mm-hmm. Harry Arnold. Wonder what his business is. Well, he must have done all right. This is an expensive sports shirt he's got on. Any idea how long he's been dead? Mm, About a half hour, I'd say. Must have been just a few minutes before Eddie walked in and... 
Well, did you just drop something? Hmm? No. It sounded as though it was someone in the bathroom here. No. Oh, look out, Doctor. Well, what's the matter, Benson? Oh, behind that door, I saw something move behind the crack. Oh, wait, I'll take a look. Nothing but a white shirt hanging there. Oh. Wet. Arnold must have used it to dry his hands off. Yeah, he looks like the kind who washed only when he entertained. Maybe that sound came from the bedroom over here. Careful now. Stay back, Benson. All right. Oh, oh. Well, hello. Let me go, let me go, please. Oh, let just take it easy, young lady. Well, what happened? Did the bellhop trap you in here? Yes, I, I found Harry like this. He was lying there when I came in. I couldn't be caught. Well, then stop wrestling and tell us who you are. Yeah, I'm Mildred Smith. And that's why you wear a diamond brooch with the initials J.P.? Oh, it's, it's a friend. You won't be able to fool the police on that, Miss Payson. What, what makes you believe my name is Payson? I recognize you from your pictures, and I saw you at your father's house once. Leave father out of this. He doesn't know anything about this. Please, please. I can understand you're wanting to protect him. He's a very great man. Doctor, is Senator Payson her father? He is. Well, a fine man like the senator, and you running around with a man like that. Well, I was never going to see Harry again. That's why I came tonight. You don't really believe I killed him. Was Arnold being unpleasant about something? Was he blackmailing oh, No. No, nothing like that. I, I'd fallen in love with him, and I thought he was in love with me. He paid me more attention than any man's ever paid me. You see, I've spent most of my time with father. Too much so, he says. When I finally fell in love, it had to be the wrong man. Oh, too bad. You're not exactly typhoid Mary. Oh, I'm rich. I have everything in the way of clothes and, and all that, but isn't is that the police? I had to send for them, Miss Payson. Well, they mustn't find me here. They'll find you eventually. We can't let Father suffer in this. We can't. Oh, please, if ever you believed anything, believe me now. All right, I think I will. We'll have to get you out of here quickly, Miss Payson. Say, wait a minute. Are you falling for this line of hers? I'm taking a chance, Benson. Even if she is innocent, Ballard will find out you've made a witness vanish. He likes you, but not that much. Now, this is your job and your professional life. I'll risk it. I'm not letting her go completely. Miss Payson, you're to stay with Benson. With me? Oh, now, look, Dr. Standish, please don't... Yes, Benson. Now, both of you come with me out to the hall. Oh. I'm going to ring for the elevator. That'll bring Eddie up out of the lobby. Benson... You take Miss Payson down by the stairs. Oh, you're crazy. I ask your indulgence. Take her out to the car and have Mike drive you back to your office. And keep Miss Payson there until I finish with Ballard. Yes, yeah, suppose we run smack into Ballard in the lobby. You can pose as a statue of a couple of saints, Benson. Oh, who'd believe in a statue with the name of St. Benson? <laughs> finish with him, Doc? Yes, Ballard, last... You can take him out now. Benny, have the boys come in and lift Arnold out of here. Yes, sir, Lieutenant. Have a hard day in your office, Doc? No. Why? Well, uh, took you longer than usual tonight. Say, what were you doing from the time the gaffer got you up here to the time we showed up? I was looking for complications. You coming down to do the post-mortem right away, Doctor? Later, probably. As soon as you can, please, Doc. We'll pick up the girl and write this up on the books. Why are you so sure it was the girl, Ballard? What about those two men who came to see Arnold earlier? Well, uh, much as he might like to, a dead man doesn't pick up the phone and order a bottle of scotch. The first fellow left here by 9.30, and the second one left in half an hour before the girl came. And Arnold phoned after number two left. Come in. Ah, uh, lucky us, Lieutenant. One of the boys you wanted was at home three blocks from here. Ewing. Any reason to talk to him, Doc? Ewing? Who's he? He's the only one of Arnold's three visitors who was polite enough to give his name to the bellhop. I had the boys pick him up before we found out the girl was guilty. Yes. I'd like to see Mr. Ewing. Bring him in, Kelly. Right. Come on, Ewing, right in here. Stick around, Benny. Kelly, you go back and take charge in the lobby. Okay, Lieutenant. Are you the uh, Ewing runs the big used car lot on Della Chopper Drive? Your boys didn't say you wanted to buy a car tonight, Lieutenant. Maybe somebody wants to buy a hearse. Yeah, they told me what happened to Harry. What'd you and Arnold talk about here tonight? I sold him a car a couple of weeks ago for 3500 The check bounced. I called him a couple of times and got but nowhere. So I came around tonight to tell him to get it up. Or else. Or else what? I'd take the car. What'd he say to that? It didn't bother him. He said he'd have the dough in the morning. Did he, uh, 
Tell you where he was getting the money? No, but I've known Harry for years. I thought probably he'd made some killing and... Yeah. That's an awful word to use, ain't it? You know Harry Arnold pretty well, huh? I know he pulled fast ones to the races and other places. I decided to give him one more chance. Oh, it's nice of him. I can be nice for 3500 You didn't have any sort of a fight with Arnold before you decided to be nice? Fight? No, no. We sat here and talked like little gentlemen. He was sitting right in that chair the last I saw him. Somebody, uh... Somebody slugged him, did they? Yes, yes, somebody did. That's all. You can go. Oh? For now. But, um, stick around town. Certainly, Lieutenant. That's where my customers live. Night, Doctor. You want me to put a tail on him, Lieutenant? No reason, Benny. He's in the clear. Arnold was alive after he left. And after the second guy came, too. You want we should pick him up? I've got it, Benny. Hello, Ballard. Yeah, sure, he's here. Uh Uh-huh. I see. Okay, I'll ask him. That was, um, Kelly from the lobby, Doc. Yes? Nothing important. Eddie the bellhop says that Benson came here with you tonight. Where is she? Oh, I had uh, Mike drive her back to the office. That's funny. The bellhop didn't see her go out any more than he saw that girl. That girl? Oh, well, perhaps she went down by the stairs, as Benson did. Yes, maybe so. Has Benson here long? Not very. (laughs) What's on your mind? Oh, I was just thinking how long the term is for concealing a suspected murderer. It's rather long. It's the end for a man in a profession. Going back to your office now? Yeah. One of the boys uh, give you a lift? No, thanks. Mike's probably come back to pick me up. Well, I'll let you know when we pick up the girl. What? I said, uh, I'll let you know when we pick up the girl. I'm sure you will. That's my doc when he makes up his mind about something or someone out of the frying pan into the soup. (laughs) And I was in the soup with him. Although I'd gotten safely back to his office with Janet Payson, I was becoming conscious minute by minute that she was seriously considering giving the doc her version of a double cross. Well, Miss Payson, you've been under a strain tonight. Lie down on this couch over here and rest until the doctor comes back. I'm quite comfortable here by the door. Thank you, nurse. By the uh, door? Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, you you weren't planning on going anyplace. Where have I to go? Well, mostly through that outside door. Then where? That's why I'm waiting for Dr. Standish to come back to tell me what happened after the police arrived. Hmm. Uh, Miss Payson... Uh, Dr. Standish thinks your father is one of the greatest men in the world, and so do I. But not the greatest. Not to me. I think the doc is. And I also think he should have his head tapped for echoes hiding you out like this. But if you do anything to risk his career or mine, well, I'll just remind you that I've been his assistant long enough to know 96 ways of murder. You, you don't need to worry, nurse. You needn't have the slightest worry. Mm-hmm. Well, we understand each other, then. Well... I think I'm going to lie down now, but I'm not closing my eyes. Well, that's what I said, but it had been a long time since I'd worked the midnight shift like this. In fact, it had been much too long. Miss Payson, I... Oh, Miss Payson, come back! I followed her outside and got to the street just as she was rounding the corner. I managed to keep up with her as she went on foot by an all-alley route through the center of town. Then I lost her in a gulf of shadows. I took bearings and realized she'd come directly to the alley behind the Mansfield Arms Hotel. Does the killer always return to the scene of the crime? Hmm, I wondered. 
Say, I needed a man, a strong man. And all of a sudden, I remembered Mike waiting for the doctor around in front of the hotel. I ran out and told Mike to cover the pacing girl. I got in the car and waited for the doc. I waited for what seemed hours. Finally, he came out and I called. Dr. Standish. Benson, what are you doing here? Hop in quick, doctor. Where's Mike? Oh, that senator's daughter got away from me. I trailed her here. Mike's holding her out in back of the Mansfield Arms. But I thought... No, we'll have to drive around the block first to make sure Ballard's men aren't suspicious. They're suspicious already. Ballard's sure we shuffled the pacing girl out of the hotel and we're covering up for her. Knows it or suspects it? Same difference as it stands now. Oh, well, then it's time we acted like sensible people. We're going to get Janet Payson and let Ballard have her. I can. Not yet. Senator Payson was a lifelong friend of my father's. And when father died, Senator Payson helped pay my tuition in med school. Yes, I know, I know. But if she's guilty of murder... If she's guilty, both the senator and I are through. What is this? Well, I'm turning into the alley behind the hotel. Now, well, here we are. Oh, well, there's Mike with the girl. Get her in here, Mike. Don't you leave me alone. I know what I'm doing. Leave look, me alone. Look, lady, I've broken the regulations <laughs> so many times tonight. I, I I've got all mind. I can take of this, of everything. Well, we'd better get out of here, don't you think? We had. Let's go, Mike. When I find her, this lady's doing just what you think she's doing, Benson. Here, this is what she was hunting for. Here, let me have it. I wondered where that was. All right, make anything you want of it. You threw your purse out of the window of Harry Arnold's bedroom when you thought you might be found there. You know everything, don't you? As a matter of fact, I also know without looking that there's several thousand dollars in here. Hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, there'll be... I thought it might be something like this. What's the picture? Well, hot stuff. Hey, that's this doll kissing a guy, ain't it? The guy who was killed. Yes, Arnold. Oh, please, please destroy that picture. Well, now I understand. Arnold was blackmailing you. You killed him to get back the photograph. All right, all right, if that's what you want to believe, but it isn't true. He was dead when I got to his room. I only searched the room and found the photograph. So, where do we go from here? Well, we can't go on driving around like this. Mm. The police radio dispatcher's been broadcasting a description of her for the last two hours, and if... Oh, what's that? In the car phone. Want me to answer it, Doctor? No, you just drive. Oh, if this is Ballard. Hello? Hello? JK23608? Yes? This is the mobile service operator. I have a call for you. Oh, go ahead, please. Hello. I want to talk to Dr. Paul Standish. Speaking. Who's this? You don't uh, know me, Doctor, but I'm calling about Harry Arnold. I was the other man there tonight. Well, I hoped I might hear from you. Can we meet at my office? Will you be alone? I'll manage to be. Be sure you are. I'll be there in your office in 20 minutes. Hmm. Any idea who that was, Doctor? Only that he was the second visitor at Harry Arnold's tonight. Then he must be the killer. He must. Harry was... I know. Dead when you got there, Miss Payson. But still, Arnold telephoned after he left. That's why I want to hurry back. Benson, we can't risk you and Mike driving around with Miss Payson while I talk to him. You'll have to stay in my inner office and keep quiet when he comes in. And if he's dangerous? At the moment, he's no more dangerous than Ballard and his suspicions. We slowed down to a crawl, a block from the building where the doc has his office. And we were lucky. The street was deserted, and so was the corridor leading to the doc's office. After we got inside, Dr. Standish ordered us... To the inner office, all of you, and keep it quiet. Well, I only want her to get out a cigarette, Doctor. Come on, come on, Miss Payson. You can smoke inside. Oh, he's here already. Well, but it hasn't been 20 minutes. Hello, Doc. You in there? It's Ballard. Oh, see you all in the police lineup. No, quick, into the consulting room there. Just a minute, Ballard. Come on, Miss Payson. I think we might as well give up. Maybe you want to risk having a new senator. What's with you, Doc? Coming, coming. Well, what have you been doing, Doc? A major operation? Sort of. Come in, Ballard. Sit down. Have a chair. Thanks. What I came to tell you was, uh, we've identified the girl. Congratulations. Aren't you curious about who she is? Yes. Who is she? Janet Payson, the senator's daughter. Well, that puts you on a spot, doesn't it? Puts me on no spot at all. I don't play politics. She's guilty, and I'm going to get her. Let me alone. Who's in there? A patient. A dame, the way it sounded. Yeah. Well, go on, Doc. Answer it. I'll wait. 
Hello? Dr. Standish speaking. Doctor, what's the idea? Coming up to your building, I almost walked into a cop's arms. Now, look, if you're going to... It's dangerous to the heart, of course. I thought you were playing square with me, but I can see... Of course, there are many cases in which even the best doctors can't foresee the complication. I didn't have anything to do with Harry Arnold's death, but I can... All I can suggest is relaxation and patience. Now, look, I'm sick of the... Oh, oh, I see. One of the cops in your office with you? Yes, in... In fact, I might tell you that there are times I suffer from the same troubles you do. I see, I see. Look, do you know the tip-top diner out on Highway 12? Yes. Yes, a joint that seldom is troublesome. Can you be there in an hour? I believe I can. I'll meet you in an hour. Yes. Yes, I'll look in on you later. No rest for the weary, hey, Doc? Well, doctors and cops always on call, Ballard. Yes. Oh, you're going? Yes, I figure you must have a lot to talk about with your patient in there. So I'll be in touch with you later this morning. Night. Night. Is it going, Doctor? Yes. <clears throat> we were listening. I've never known my neck to be further out, Mike. Who called out? Miss Payson. She was trying to climb through the window. You've done enough for me. I can't let you run these risks any longer. Now, look, Miss Payson. I know this has been a bad night for you, and that your nerves must be on edge. But you've got to trust me a while longer. I've been too far now to let you go to the police. Oh, you'll have to go. I'll take you there myself if you're guilty. But if you're innocent, as you still claim, I'll have to get us out of this in my own way. Now, Mike, I want you to stay with Miss Payson. Benson, you come along with me. Where to? To a diner on Highway 12. As soon as the doc and I were seated at the lunch counter, I took a look around the place and picked out Mr. Hush right away. He was the only other man in the place who wasn't a truck driver. We watched him put a coin in the jukebox before he strolled over. Dr. Standish? Yes. This is my nurse and assistant, Miss Benson. Hi. Do we have to have the music? I don't want too much of an audience. Well? I, uh, I don't know how to begin. Well, you might start with your name. Oh, Walker. Frank Walker. I'm Senator Payson's secretary. Senator Payson? Uh Aha. Well, that's how you obtained my mobile phone number. Where's Janet? She's safe. Let's hear about your visit to Harry Arnold. Well, I, uh... I had business with him. Several thousand dollars worth? Oh, you know that. Let's see how much I do know. Arnold not only was blackmailing Janet... But he let you know so you could tell her what the scandal would do to her father. Yes, I didn't want either one of them to be hurt. You're in love with her. Yes. I don't think she knows it yet, but I... She'll need you, Walker, if she gets out of this. Or if she doesn't. Is she really in danger? She is. You learned Janet was going to pay Arnold off. You went there tonight to try and scare him off. Yes, but I didn't kill him. And I know Janet didn't either. But I can't prove it. Arnold didn't scare. I don't know what was wrong with him. He wasn't even talking sense most of the time. Got the idea I was putting pressure on him all right, but it didn't worry him. I can't believe she hit him at all. There's no denying, though. Arnold was alive a few minutes before she went up. Oh, by the way, did he say anything about having a headache? A headache? Yes, as a matter of fact, he did, but I can't... I thought so. Is it important, Doc? I can't be sure until after I do the postmortem, but I think it's very important, Benson. Hello, Ballard. Doc, I was just getting ready to call on you. I've waited about as long as I can for you to play straight with me about Janet Payson. You still want to arrest her? I have the warrant in my pocket. I think you'd better take a look at my report first, Ballard. Meaning what? I've got the post-mortem report almost ready for you. Can we get all the witnesses together at your office in about an hour? They'll be there. And I hope you know what you're doing, Doc. Well, I'll take off my cap to Ballard for his performance when the Doc and I entered his office with Janet Payson in tow. He never batted an eye but took the report and shuffled it officially as he looked around at the others. Ewing, the used car dealer, young Mr. Walker, and a couple of his own men. Well, I uh, have here the medical examiner's report. It says that Arnold suffered a slight fracture of the skull when he fell, but uh, that he died of a subdural hemorrhage. 
Uh, what exactly is that, Doctor? Before I answer, is it all right to ask a few questions, Lieutenant? Certainly. Mr. Ewing, do you remember how Arnold was dressed when you called on him last night? Why, uh, like anybody else, a suit, gray, I think, a shirt. A tie? Yes. Well, that is, I think so. Miss Payson? He wore a checkered sport shirt when I saw him and no tie. Walker? That's how it was when I saw him, too. Sport shirt. Mm-hmm. Well, to get back to the hemorrhage, the dura is the covering of the brain. Now, Arnold was struck a blow on the jaw and fell, hitting his head on the floor. But there was no fatal injury to the brain itself. What happened was that some veins in the dura were ruptured. As the bleeding continued, the brain was compressed. Arnold died from cerebral compression, and death was not instantaneous or anything like it. How long, Doctor? Oh, sometimes a day or two. No, I mean this time. This one was unusually quick. I'd say about two hours, maybe a little more. What makes you think so? Because I think Ewing is the one who hit him. Me? Are you crazy? There was nothing wrong with him when I left. He talked as plain as you do. I know, Ewing. There's generally a period of lucidity after such injuries. Now, Arnold didn't know how badly he'd been hurt. But later, he must have had a bad headache. Why, sure he did. Remember I told you, Doctor? And that was the confirmation I needed, Walker. Arnold sent out for the scotch because the compression was getting bad and he couldn't get relief. Before that scotch came, he was dead. I don't know anything about that. But you hit him, Mr. Ewing. And when he fell, he lost consciousness. Oh, you got panicked. You did what most people would have done. Went into the bathroom, got a glass of water, and threw it in his face. He revived, but his shirt and tie were wet. That's why he changed after you left. No, no, that ain't so, I... Remember, Lieutenant, I told you how Benson was frightened by a wet shirt hanging on the bathroom door? I said Arnold didn't seem to care what he wiped his hands on. It wasn't his hands got the shirt wet. It was the water Ewing threw after he hit Arnold. Test the glass for fingerprints. Now, look, you, you can't make it murder. It wasn't my fault. It's up to the district attorney, Ewing. Take him away, Benny. <laughs> That's my boss who did that. He's ten hours older than when he got mixed up in the situation, and he's lacking that much sleep. But his job as medical examiner is safe. And as soon as he drives me to the office, we'll settle down to being just what we were before we met Janet Payson, which is quite all right with... Well, wouldn't you just know it? Look who's coming. You know, Doctor, you've been so understanding. You've given me confidence in myself. I've wanted to do this since the first time you said you'd help me. Oh, really, Miss Payson, it wasn't any... <clears throat> the kiss means thank you. Well, thank you. I mean, can we drop you someplace? Thanks. Mr. Walker has his car here. But I'll see you again. Bye. Goodbye. Well, let's go, Benson. Hmm. Well... Something's on your mind, Benson? Oh, I was just thinking. I just wish she had let us drop her somewhere. Oh? Where? On her head, preferably. Oh, there's the car phone, Doctor. Oh, no. Now what? Hello, JK23608. This is the mobile service operator. Don't you ever go home, operator? I have next week's case for you, Dr. Standish. One of your friends, Dr. Williams, is in serious trouble with the police on a narcotics peddling charge. Bill Williams? Impossible. Can you come down to headquarters and talk to him? Of course. Benson and I will be right down. Join George Harmon Cox's famous young medical examiner, Dr. Standish, next week for the case of murder in the little black bag. Tonight's story was written by Mr. Cox, Charles Gusman, and Charles S. Monroe. Gary Merrill is featured as Dr. Standish, and Audrey Christie as Nurse Mary Benson with Eric Dressler as Ballard. Original music by Chet Kingsbury. The director is Albert Ward. This is Lee Vines, and this is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>